Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to show you a um, little fold today. I've been playing around with lots of different folds this week. And look, I'm sure this has been done lots and lots of times. Everything's been done lots and lots of times. This is my take on it. It's a great way to use up your paper again. Now you can do it in double-sided paper, single-sided paper. Um, I've got A4 sheets or letter-sized sheets that I've got along the way that are patterned on one side, plain on another, that for some reason I've been hoarding them, as you do. And I've just got oodles. I'm in the process of cleaning up and reorganising because I'm getting a new workstation. So I keep coming across all this paper. Now, this was a paper pad that I bought years ago, and it's probably two inches thick with paper. I'd hate to say how many sheets are in this thing. Um, and they're normal. They're not A4 size, so they're a little bit shorter than A4 size, a little bit wider. They're about eight and a half wide, about 10 inches in length. So I've been playing around with those with lots of different folds. So for today's, I want to do this one. Now, it's just a little, it's what they call a card holder. So it'll hold business cards. You can do them in different sizes. This is the size I did them in to utilise these papers. This is how it comes out. So you've got a little tuck in here. You've got a little tuck in here, in here, and on either side of the spine. So that when you decorate them, they just come out a treat. So this is one that I've done that is now decorated. So I've got a couple of tags just in here for journaling. And they just sit back in there. There's one either side. I've got a little journal card in here. Another little journal card in here. I hope I'm in shot. I've moved my camera angle so that it was closer for all of this. And then when you got it closed on your spine, you've got a little journal card on that side and a little journal card on that side. So technically I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in this from a square piece of paper. It is very, very easy to do. Um, and while I was playing around so that I could have a, a plain one sitting here without anything in it to show you, I came up with another idea. <laughs> so we're going to play with that idea today. That's just your general journal cards and all the rest. Put them in there. That goes there. That's there. That's there. And it closes like so. Right, I'll sit you aside. So this piece that I'm doing today is eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Standard letter size or A4 size is about eight and a quarter. So you can do eight and a quarter if you like. You can do 12 by 12. You can do any size you want. If you want wheel little tiny ones, you can do four by four. Starting, so this one is plain on one side, patterned on the other. Starting with that, we're just going to fold it in half. There's no sticking, there's no measuring, there's no cutting. It is awesome. So we're just going to fold it in half. Hope that my square is fairly square. Give it a crease with bone folder. Burnish down if you don't have a bone folder. An old store card will do the same sort of thing. Okay, I find these just sit in my hand easier, but that'll work exactly the same. So all you've done at the moment is folded it in half, fold it back out. Now with your side, so you've still got your wrong side towards you. Fold one side over so that it meets that centre crease. Push him down, give him a nice crease again. Go exactly the same on the other side so that it meets that centre fold. If it's a little bit of out of whack, don't worry about it too much. You don't want it way out of whack, but just a little bit's fine. 
All right, so now we've just got it folded so that you've got a valley, a hill, and a valley. Nice and easy. Each corner, we're going to fold down. I need to turn it around so that my eyes can see where I'm going. So our corner line, top line, is going to run down our crease. So we're just going to bring it over and in. Crease him down. Same with the next piece, bringing him up to that one. I need to go that way so that the light's on it, angled it the right way, and then I can actually see that crease line. If you can't see your crease line, you could always put your ruler there. One, you can just leave your ruler there and go to the ruler line. You could put a pencil line down there as well. This is the wrong side, so you won't see this fold anyway okay so if it makes it easier for you you can put a pencil line down there in saying that i'll struggle with this so going up onto my crease line down same with this one down to my crease line and down Okay, so that's what I've now ended up with. That wasn't hard. Fold that one over to that one. Bring him back to that one. So now I've got that. Okay, so now I will actually turn it over so that you can't see any of the folds or anything else. Just this centre fold line. What we're going to do is bring it up from the bottom so that you are where your V now is, this little section where these two join. We want to bring it up so that we're just on that V. So turn it whichever way you need to turn it for that. Line it up and down with that V so that I'm just on the V. And this one, I'm going to do the same thing, but I want to actually come past this line this time okay so i want to come about a quarter of an inch down just enough to tuck in so i'm just going to fold him over so that you can see i'm just going past Hang on, let's where are we here so there's my end i'm going to about there so that it's just past this line flat flat because it makes it so much easier if it's flat which is going to bring us on to our V anyway. Give that a good push down. Okay. Nice and straight. Nice and creased. And then from that, all you're going to do, tuck that one in there. Tuck that one in there. Ready for it? Now we're just going to fold this back on itself. And it's done. Okay, it opens out. There's your pocket. There's your pocket. There's your pocket. There's your pocket. And there's your pocket. So give that all a really good burnish down so it stays nice and flat for now. How hard are they to fold? There is just a myriad of things that you can do with this one. Um, yeah, I like that as my front. It's probably up the wrong way, but that's fine because by the time I embellish it and do everything else with it, you won't see too much. As you can see from that one, there's not much of the initial paper left showing. And I've just got a strip of lace down there, some cheesecloth and a flower. Now, for my little journal cards in here, all they are... And this one I want to do the other way around. So it's two inches. That's for this size. Okay, now this size, as I said before, was eight and a half by eight and a half. Depending on the size that you do this little tuck, pocket, book, whatever you want to call it. I must, must work out what it's called before I put it up. Um, 
depending on the size that you want to do it will depend on your little journal cards so for me i just want them to fit so that they're flush in there which is what this one is so these ones are about two inches deep and i think they're three and they were not quite four inches from memory ah oh, three and three quarters there you go okay what i want to do with these ones though is just change them up a little bit because they're black now you can write on them with a silver pen a white pen or you can change them up so i've pre-cut just some little tabs okay which are these ones now most of the time when i ink i ink in my walnut stone as you all know this time i'm using black soot because i'm doing black and almost white you know i don't do white very often really very often so and i just want the reason i'm inking these if you can look at them you'll see that there's a core a white core from the cardstock on the inside that's why i ink because it takes away that white of the core color whether i'm doing brown whether i'm doing blue whether i'm doing whatever color so that's the reason that i ink up small things like this that you really can't see that they've been distressed or anything else it's not for the aesthetic look of putting all that ink over them and distressing them and all the rest it's to take away that white line on the side now inking is personal choice it's up to you whether you want to ink or not um that it's wholly and solely up to you so don't feel that just because i've inked them you need to ink them and you need to run out and buy certain colors and all the rest it's yeah don't please 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 don't feel like you have to do it as well it's just it's personal choice and for me i like that look i like to take away the white on these and i like to distress my edges with the inks as well right they're all sitting there done what i want to do with these is i'll fold them make them nice and flat to start with now these are a metal die for my big shot machine um you can get them in punches you can cut them out yourself there's lots of different ways to get tabs there's lots of different ways out there and things out there so for me i find i've got a die i've actually got a mm, let's have a look behind me i think yep mine is a uniquely creative die so it has this little tab die and it has the full folio die as well i bought this set for this and i think i've used it once this i pull out every week and usually i'll cut piles of them if i've got scrap paper sitting around i'll cut lots of extra ones and just have them sitting there so that they're in a pile and i can grab my right color that i want so you know we buy something for some reason if and then it turns out to be a completely different reason but as long as you use it, it makes no difference what i want to do is put my tabs on these and i tend to put my tabs about that far down before I do that, though, I want to put some white. Now, I'm just using normal white copy paper to go in with this. So they need to be, you know, around about there and there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tear ruler because I'm just that way inclined today. Oh, I missed all of that, didn't I? Too small, I'd say. Uh, just line you up there. Take a little bit extra from that. Put my finger on it properly this time. That's better. Right. So I want a piece that's going to be round about that. Okay. I never measure. I just sit them against them. So if I sit that there so that I'm lined up with my top line, I can sit my tear ruler down round about on that line of my grid. I always use my grid. And then we can check. 
right take a bit off this side which will be about there and I need that one back so I just want a bit over a quarter of an inch taken off that one so I'm sitting vaguely there sitting around about there and we'll see how that goes. Too big? Too big, she cried. So I'm no good with measurements. <laughs> Let's take it back to that one. It can always be smaller. That's better. That's better. Right. I'm just going to glue that one. And I'm just going to use my glue stick. So now I'm actually going to use some glue. I've made my whole little case. Case. It could be a case, couldn't it? A card case. A journal case. Mm, I don't know. We need to come up with an idea for what word it can be called. So just down like so, give him a push. Now, if I was doing this fully complete, I would do both sides. And then what I want to do is put my tag, I just need a tag, they're both the same. I will then use my white glue. So it's just a normal liquid glow over that all the way down again I will use my grid put the lid back on that one sit that like that so all I'm doing is sliding it down a little bit and I'm measuring it up round about for this little bit here. Give that one a push. Push all my excess glue out. Double check I've got no excess glue on there. And there's my first little journal card. Now I could put the white on both sides and in which case I would put my white on before I do my little tab. Or I could leave that size side Ooh, say that again, that side black and, you know, put some embellishment bits on it. You look at, let's have a look. I've got my little tab of birds, which needs, oh, that's so noisy, sorry. Oh, my birds so need filling. Um, you know, I could stick something like these ones. on it and not necessarily have any journaling. Any of those would fit. You're not going to fit. But you know what I mean. Right. So let's say that one's in there like that. Your other side, you know, I would then put this one down here very quickly. Let's not be so pedantic with this this time. And let's just, let's just do. What do you reckon? Let's just do. Mm -hmm. Let's give up and just tear. What do you reckon? <laughs> I have so much more control with my hands than I do with my ruler. What I'd normally do if this was for me to go into one of my journals and not just the the showing of what to do with one of these little cases is I would ink around my little journaling posse. Stick that down. So much quicker if I'm not using that ruler, isn't it? Strange. All right. 
That's inked up. And back on there. And back out with my yucky little cloth, just to push it down. This time we'll use one of these tabs. Back on with our white glow. And this time I want it down the other side. So I'll put it towards the bottom. Well, let's face it. They can be up the top each way and fold over. Because this one is going to go on that side. So I want my tab down here this time. So I just set that there just to use my grid. So I lift that up round about the same in. It's looking fairly straight. Was before I did that. Push it over. Give it a push. That one will sit in there like that. They are just so easy. Now, as I said, I thought of something else I could do with this one. Of course, my normal tags, let's pretend they're tags, they will need cutting down. I've got another piece of black here. I did, I did, I did. I saw it. There. I just put my little containers on it. Let's make this one into a tag. So what have we got? Oh, four inches there. So if I cut that, cut that just under two, because I know my other ones are two inches and I want them, the ones in the middle, to be a little bit smaller so they don't foul up the fold. All right. So that they will go in there. They won't foul anything up. Beautiful. I do want them a little bit shorter. And I'll turn them into a tag. So I'll just use my, my little template. Something's not straight there. But that's my story all over. Okay. So... And that one. So one tag, which will now go in. Nice and easy. Was that my other one that I cut down? Yes, he's smaller than those. So I cut about that much off the bottom, didn't I? That looks kind of straight. And that one, turn it over. Try and hang on to it. That one, sit that one over there. And that one would go in there. Let's get rid of a few of these. Now I want to show you what I came up with the other this morning. Move some of this. Move some of this. Sit that there. Move some of my mess. Sit my birdies back away before I tip them over. Got a tail caught in there. All right. I have been known to tip them over before. Put the lid on my glue stick. Clear some space and I'll show you something. Right. So what we've got, all in all, is a bit over four inches. So I want to make that a bit under four inches. I'll show you what I'm going to do. So again, piece of copy paper. Again, that's because I'm using the black and the white. So a little bit under four inches. Cut one. And I'll cut two. Now technically, technically, don't you love that word? This should be a square. Yep, so a little bit under four inches should be fine. So I've got... No, it's not. That is not a square. You learn something new every day. <laughs> so what I've got is... That bit. Just 
and fold that in half. And I use pencil art, if I can find my pencil. I want them about that height. Cut the two of those together. So it's a little bit over three and three quarters. Have I gone the right way? Yep. Going that way. Fold that one down, which will give me, what? One, two, three, four, eight pages. So a little bit over three and three quarters. Going that way, was I? Yep. All right. And they all match. Close enough too, anyway. So there's my pages. I'm gonna make this into a little notebook. Going that way. So I want to fold that way. Let's fold them one by one because they're all going to go out of whack, aren't they? One, two, they're out of whack anyway. Three. Should have turned that overhead light on as well. Sorry, that's very glary. And try and match it up. Right. Pop those back in there. What I'm gonna do is sew that into that center seam. So that what I've ended up with is a little notebook. How's that? I just thought, oh, what a, what a brilliant idea. Now, for me, I would, as I said before, I would distress with this one because I want that distressed look. So again, I'm using the black soot. This one's just a little bit had it, so... I'll go really rough with it. Um, I'm using the black soot just to keep it all in the the blacks and the whites. And I know I'm rubbing that down like I shouldn't be, but this one's already had it, so we might as well kill it all at once. Now, I also, when I'm doing my pages, I like to do that centre bit. Okay, so I will do that on both sides. So you can pretend we've done all of these. I'll just do the one for speed sake. But you'll get the idea then of what they are. So that when it sits in there, they're like that. Okay, even if I've just got, so that's my top, my middle sig, of my signature. If I do the next one in, and that way, still gives that shadowed look. When you're going through your pages, and you open it out, it still gives you that shadowed look, even once they're sewn together. Make sense? So I can go back and ink these at any time around the outside edges, but I will just do this centre bit before they're actually sewn together. When we sew them, we'll just do a standard three-hole pamphlet stitch, which is, it's the stitch I tend to use all the time if I'm doing my journals. Um, I haven't done a five, I find that the threes work best for me. Um, usually if I'm doing a journal, I'll do a hidden spine anyway, but with, and have my bow or my closing on the inside. With this one, I was thinking it might be nice to have my bow on the outside. So what I wanna do 
Yes. I want my little prick mat. I'm going to sit those in there. Set that in there so that it's nice and even. Okay, I'll take that out so that I can actually see what I'm doing here. Lift it up because I want it to go into that spine, not into these areas. Find my little awl. There it is. Sorry, it's so noisy on these glass ones. So if I sit that there, can you see where we're going? So we want to go round about the middle. Mm, again, you could measure if you like. So I'm just going straight down. Yep, that's come straight through there. So now I want to go, uh, not necessarily in the middle between that hole and there. We want to go a little bit further down, not too close that you're all going to rip your pages. But so if you found the middle, this is how I do it. Doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Everybody has their own way of doing it. For me, this is how I do it. I find it works for me. It might not work for you. So just because I do it doesn't mean you have to. What I do, I will find my middle point, which would be about there, and then just head down a little bit. And I know that makes no sense, but it's what I do. <laughs> you just need to find what works for you. So I've turned that around, and I'll do exactly the same on this side now. So I'll find my middle point, which would be about there, and then I'll just head down a bit. It may not come out exactly the same. They're not too far. Now, if we want to be pedantic, let's have a look. Oh, I hate how those always do that. So I've gone up three quarters of an inch. Oh, three quarters of an inch. Look at that. Look at that. So I'm just going to sit that one back in there now to hold it in place. That way I don't have to fiddle around with it and all the rest to try and find it again. So I'm just using a crochet cotton. And all I'm going to do is take it about three times the length of my little book. Because now it's become a book. Chop it off. And I already have my needles sitting here. Right. I've just got, it's a very long needle for a very small book, but it's the needle I tend to use each time. And it's got a nice big head so I can find it each time. Right, so as I said, normally when I do these, I will go from the centre. I'm going to put you up there and hold you there. But with this one, what I want to actually do is go... Sorry, I go from the inside. I know what I mean. I want to go from the outside. So then I've moved that. So we'll just go through there. And then we'll find those ones. All right. I'll take that out now. Because I've already got something to hold it. So pull through there. Keep a little bit there, enough to tie your bow. All right. I'm going up here. All right. I'm going all the way down to the bottom hole. If I can find it. Let's lift those up. Ah, oh, there it is. All right. Pulling it down. Getting rid of some of that. And then back through my centre hole. Now, hold that one up a little bit so that it's not fouling your hole. Because the last thing you want to do is thread your needle through that cotton already. You can do it and it'll kind of work, but it just makes life painful because you've then got to try and tighten it. So we'll take that out. We'll, so here I've got these. We're going to tighten all this. Take one this side of it. So 
So I've tightened all those ones. Going to just tie a knot. So right over left, left over right. Now, whether that's what I'm doing or not, I don't know, but it always works out for me. And in my head, it just goes that. That's my girl guide days. Um, so now I have my attachment on the outside. Now, what I would normally do with something like that one is I'd hang a bead or something from it. And I don't think I bought any beads. We'll have a look. And with this sort of crochet cotton, it would just be a couple of beads and a knot at the bottom. So I'll trim those up a little bit. Well, let's see what we can find. I should have some beads here somewhere. I did, I did, I did. Where are you guys? Oh, hang on. Oh. I've got those ones. All my other beads are with my jewellery making supplies over the other side. Right, so we want to go black. <laughs> Let's see if these ones, look at that, look at that. Do I have anything clear? It's got no other colour with it, has it? There's no reason why we couldn't go. What's that blue? Oh, hang on. Not going to find a couple that. Oh, and they've got very, very tiny little holes. Too small for this little eyesight. Um, they're a bit big for that. Let's go back over here. Let's try those orange ones. All right. Let's try those. That one. And that one. Let's go that way. Right. So, if I go a couple of orange, <laughs> if I go a couple of orange, so one, and two, lost it. Let's hold it up. All fingers today. There we go. Two. And then a black one. So now at least we know the theme, colour of embellishments that we're putting on. We're heading in the orange direction. Now I could go as many or as little of those as I like, or I could just have them so that they dangle off, which is what I'm going to do with this one. So I don't want too long a dangle. I'm just going to tie a couple of knots in there. But I want to go a double knot because I want it fairly large so that they don't fall out. Always wise to then just double check. That's not going to go anywhere. Trim off that. And what I've now got is a little dangle. So let's do the same to this side. What do we have? Two orange. Now, most of my beading, all of this sort of stuff, is broken jewellery. You'll find bags of broken jewellery and bits and pieces at thrift shops. And they're a great way to get bits and pieces of colours, I find. Right, so we want it not necessarily the same, well, I want it, not necessarily the same size because I like them to hang a little bit lower so that they're not sitting exactly the same place. So I'm thinking about there. Let's have a look. One's there, one's there. We'll take it up just a little bit. Right. And another one. Oh, that one didn't work, did it? 
don't know whether that's gone directly onto it or not. Let's have a look. No, it's not going to come off. Always give it a little bit of a tug to see if that bead will fall off there or not. Now what I've got... Oh, he is a bit too long. Oh, well. He is a bit too long. So let's make him a little bit smaller. I don't want it to come off my my new little book because I want the little book to go in a pocket in my journal. So if I've got too much hanging out of here, it's not going to hang the way I want it to hang and it'll foul my pocket. So let's have a look at that. That's a bit better. So. Oh no, I need still a little bit longer. So see how we've done that? So now our little, our little card holder, journal holder, um, business card holder has become a book. So I've still got tags in here. And I've gone upside down. So we just turn it around that way and it's exactly the same. There we go. <laughs> Going that way. Remember I said at the start, I like that piece is my front piece. So this is the way we're going. So I've got this and then I've got all these little journal pages. There's our centre to write in. Tag at the end again. Tag here. And then I've still got my two little tags at the end. We've got a little bit of time left. So what I want to do is pop my journaling on these. So we won't use the tear ruler this time. We'll just good old fashioned tear it. How's that? I seem to have so much more control. So go there. Take a little bit off that side. And this is why I have nails. Because I have more control over tearing when I have nails. And let's face it. For me, I like that rough worn look because that's me. So I need one of those. I need two of those because I'm going to put it on both sides. Now, I could have used tea dye one, and actually I spent this morning, um, I went to work, went to do some stuff yesterday and I realised I had no tea dyed grid paper. And so I spent this morning just doing up some grid paper in tea dye, ready to, to use. I just like to have bits of them already done, sitting there, ready to go when, you know, my mind goes, hmm, I know exactly what I want to put in that. And I need to have them done because otherwise I'll go, yes, that works a treat. And then I'll go and think, right, I'll go and do that now. But four hours later, I've gone and done that. And then I've gone and done something else and then something else after that. And I've lost the day because I keep getting sidetracked. <laughs> and really achieved nothing. Got lots of pretty papers. But my journals or any prototypes or anything else that I've been working on have gone nowhere because I'm very easily distracted. You know, ooh, pretty things type thing. So, all right, one side. I think that side, so we'll go that way. And I'm just going to turn that round because it does tend to have a lot of glue on it now. Going this way. It's a little bit of a mess here. Right, down there, make sure I've got my corners. Sit you there, sit that out of the way. Down in there. So now I have a card with the two journal posies on it. We'll put another one of these on there. So this is the front. So I want the opposite one. Me, which is that one. There's my grandfather clock, sorry, peoples. That must mean it's four o'clock. Right. I promised myself I'd be done by four. 
I think it was about quarter past when I started. I did forget to look, so I thought 45 minutes should well and truly do this, or 40 minutes. So we'll do this and finish up. Um, while I have you all here, I just want to thank, now I want to go up the top one. This makes no difference because it'll change each side, won't it? I want to thank all of you who have subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's just been wonderful to watch you all come on board um, with comments and just enjoy my work. Thank you so much. It's just so heartening. It is wonderful. So I can't, I can't thank you enough. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope I live up to your expectations. <laughs> I hope I keep coming up with different things. I'm sure I will. I've been paper crafting for 20 odd years. So as my husband says, with just all the stuff that's going around in your brain, you should be right for a while. So with any luck, I will be. Right, so as I said, journal card in here journal card in here, tag in here, lots of little paper to write, tag in here, journal card in here, and then of course we would have our journal card with all these, and I should get two out of that, shouldn't I, they don't take that long to do. So, and then our last little journal card on there. What have we got? Just a little bit off there. I've got a thumbnail on this side, but I don't have one on the other side, so we'll need this one. Which is why I was trying to use my tear ruler, but that didn't work. Right, and our other one, tear down there. Could always cut it. Could just use my scissors, couldn't I? That would just be too easy. Way too easy. Right, there. Oh, uh, and there. Very quickly go around the edges, make them look a bit grungy, because that's just my style. Down one, do the other one. Down there. All right. That's all linked up. We will stick those down. I will finally put the that back on there. We'll get rid of some of this mess. We'll go. I might get a clean sheet on that one. Fold that over. All right. Very quickly, just glue that up to finish off and then we can at least say we've finished it apart from embellishing and let's face it half the time yes that's the fun one and the other half that's the bit that takes the longest because it's that thought process each time of mm, is that going to be the best bit or could I do something different and we we hesitate and we self-doubt ourselves whenever we're decorating anything because, oh, is it really going to be the best choice? What if there's something else? And in the most part, what you've picked up in the first place is what you need to use. You've picked it up more than likely because it's something you like. So if it's something you like, you're halfway there. It's, that's what we're looking for. It needs to... We need to stop self-doubting ourselves, whether it's in our crafting or just in our general lives. Just go for it. And we all do it. Oh, look, there are some days I'll sit here and I'm trying to embellish something or I'll be just doing a prototype and I think, oh, I'll get that one done up. And, you know, two hours later, I'm still sitting there going, I haven't stuck anything on this yet because oh, if I stick that on, what if I come across something that's a little bit better and that looks better? Just go for it. Please, just go for it. Stop self-doubting ourselves and just go for it. So I'm just lifting that up, sliding that in. So each time I've gone a bit over a quarter of an inch up or down. 
Give that a little push, fold that over. Give him a big push. Make sure there's no glue on there. Right, so we've got that one, we've got that one, that one, and that one. And then our little closer is in between the two of those. So it still opens because our tabs aren't in the, if your tabs were in the same place, as in we turned that over and they were both up there, they would hit each other whenever you opened it. So having one up the top, one down the bottom, means that when it opens, it opens like that. So your tabs are top and bottom. So it doesn't foul itself with it opening. So now we've got this little book. If you've forgotten how I folded it, start with a square, fold it in half, fold it back out, fold your two ends into your half crease point again, and then fold your corners down. That was it. Otherwise, whiz back to the start of the video <laughs> and I go through it bit by bit. But you'll find that whatever size you start with, you'll get all sorts of different sizes with them. Um, all of mine have been about this size because, as I said, I was playing with this, with this paper. So, very quickly, pull this guy apart. No glue. Woohoo. Okay. Fold him out, fold him out, fold him out, move that over. All right, there's your square, right sides together, crease. Okay, open it back out so that you're looking at the wrong side. One side over so that it goes to that center crease, the other side over so that it goes to that center crease. Okay. Got it. Open it back out. Corner down into that side crease. Same with that one. Same with that one. Same with that one. That's it, remember. Turn it over and you've got this wonderful hexagonal type shape thing, you know, square without its corners. Sorry. Turn it back over the way you were, as you were, as you were. Fold this one into this one, that one into that one. Now turn it over. One side up, crease down so that it's just over your tip. The other side so that it goes past this one, like so. And then just tuck that in there, that in there and fold him shut. Simple as that. And you can do so much with them. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you make heaps of them. Different colours, different things. Start thinking of all sorts of different ways you can do these. Put them in your journals. They're just little journals on their own. Great little gifts. Put, make them a little bit larger. Put a gift card in there to give somebody. There's so many different ways you can use them. I really hope you've enjoyed them. Until next time, happy crafting. Thanks, guys. Bye.